Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about Robotham applications. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. In Canadian law, an individual who is accused of a criminal offence can make an application to the court that the court effectively pay for the lawyer that they want to deal with their case. This is different than the legal aid system where you would be assigned a state-funded lawyer in that the court would pay the reasonable rates of the lawyer that you particularly want to handle your case. In order to get that, you have to bring something known as a Robotham application before the court. And in the course of those applications, a real question has arisen, especially in a recent case called Keeping, about whether or not and to what extent the defense has to disclose its strategy at trial. In order to justify your ability to have a particular lawyer, some information about how that lawyer is going to defend you and why that particular lawyer is necessary is required to be put before the court. But the extent to which you have to disclose your defense is a real live question, and this came up in the case of keeping. One of the important issues that is engaged in this question that the Supreme Court of Canada ultimately declined to hear is your right to protect yourself against conviction. And an important feature of the constitutional principle of the presumption of innocence and the burden of proof being on the state in a criminal prosecution is that the defense effectively in almost every scenario, but for a few limited exceptions, is entitled to keep its strategy and keep its theory of the case to itself and to use that at trial as a defense without requiring that it be disclosed to the Crown so that the Crown may investigate or the Crown may find evidence to prove that it's not accurate or call other witnesses in response to it before the defense has the opportunity to put their version of the case forward. And Mr. Keeping's application for the Supreme Court of Canada to deal with this issue was dismissed, which unfortunately leaves, again, this sort of unanswered question about the extent to which people have to disclose their defense strategy, particularly where it may compromise the issues in their case. Hopefully the Supreme Court of Canada gets another opportunity to clarify the procedures around these applications and to limit the extent to which it actually infringes upon the defense's rights at trial simply because the defense is asserting a different right that it has to have state-funded counsel uh, available to them and to exercise the right to counsel of choice. Rights that are protected under the Charter should not be used in a manner that results in them being in competition with one another. And in any case where there is competition between Charter rights is a case, in my opinion, that the Supreme Court of Canada should hear. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law. Thank you to Brazenville Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.